Amen. Well, 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 today I start a new series, another series, amen. Uh, uh, under I know uh, under I had to take a little break from the series because we was having 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 services here, here though and there. But but though I uh, I start a new series today. But though before I give you my topic for the series, I want to um under say this. Um, I used to hang around my granddad all the time growing up. Amen. I I would go to his house house. Of, house all the time. It, it was some things my granddaddy taught me. One of the things he taught me was um, how to play checkers. He did. He taught me how to play checkers. Uh, um, under, and, uh, and what was so amazing about the things he taught me about checkers was because checkers are full of choices, full of moves, full of a decision you got to make. Amen. And so so then, though, uh, uh, Undo, he taught me how to play checkers. See, see, um, it's full of choices. One choice after another choice. At times, my granddaddy would, would, would see me make bad choices, bad moves, and would try to warn me. But I thought I could see the whole board. I thought I could see see the entire board so when I would start making bad moves bad choices I would lose more than I wanted to lose making bad moves and bad choices he would start jumping three men at a time and start laughing at me because though because though he was trying to warn me that was a bad move so, so then, though, uh, uh, I never quite understood until the more I played checkers to where you have to make moves that's going to affect the next move. That's going to affect the next move. That's going to affect the next move. So I'm just wondering, in life, have we been making bad moves, bad choices, bad though, decisions in life? to where it's affecting our kingdomship in the kingdom of God. I just wonder, in life, are we making bad moves? So, y'all, let's think about checkers as we go through life, amen? And let's make moves that's going to uh, under affect my future uh, under and in a way that God will get the glory out of my life. Amen. Amen. Just a little thought about checkers. My my uh, granddad had taught me, man. Um, starting this um new new series. The topics of this series is level up, cleaning up, level up, cleaning up, perfectly vertical, perfectly, perfectly horizontal, uncontaminated untainted it's time for us to level up cleaning up and time for us to get perfectly vertical that would make us perfectly horizontal let's not be contaminated because sometimes I think if we do things don't realize how much of a contamination it it has on us. You know, like uh, under we have some free spirited people who um just participate in sexual activities, but they don't realize that when you're not married, sexual activities brings a brings a, a, around demons, right. transmitted demons, spiritual. Demons, and now that you, you done got up, it was just one. Now that you done got up, you got six people in. Because you won't level up by cleaning up and getting you getting it in per, perfectly vertical, so I can be perfectly horizontal, so I can be uncontaminated and untainted. 
But though t- today, our first one is going to deal with um, free to make my choice, free to make my move, free to make my decision. And that's for a subtopic, but be sure you make the right choice. Be sure you make the right move. Make, be sure you make the right decisions. So y'all, and I, I got a quite a bit of scripture. So uh, uh, and, uh, I got my wife to with me, and so uh, and, uh, I wanna uh, I wanna put you on scripture overload this morning, amen. And so whenever you get there, y'all just start waving your hand, and then I back up off some of them scriptures, amen. But 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 uh, until you get this overdose, I'm gonna try to pour inside of you God's word and give you less of my words, amen. amen. Because the, I just believe that at the end of the day. God's word is more than enough. If we could just find people that would make decisions according to the word of God, if we could find people that would work God's word, what a better place we'll be. Amen. Psalms 19. Psalms 119. Y'all uh, under y'all don't might want to write some of these um down. And go back and read them in different translations. I'm gonna come out of uh, under for the most part. I'm gonna come out of the TPT version, but, but the, just write them down. Come back to them. I've got a, uh, I've got a schedule. I gotta stay on. So, uh, and I, I gotta hit this. I got, I got, I got quite a bit of scriptures. So then, I got to, um, I got to go with it. Amen. Uh, Psalms 119, 65 through 68. Reads like this. And please listen to the scripture because what I say after the scripture really don't, don't make a difference. But the word of God changes lives, sets detours, make us make good decisions, good choices, and good moves. Amen. 65 reads like this Your extravagant kindness uh-huh. to me. Makes me want to follow your words even more. Uh Uh-huh. Go ahead. Keep reading. Teach me how to make good decisions. Say that again. Teach me how to make good decisions. Amen. Go ahead. And give me revelation light. Mm -hmm. For I believe in your Mm -hmm. command. Yes. Before I was humbled, Mm -hmm. I used to always wander astray. Come on now. But now I see the wisdom of your word. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is beautiful. Flowing from your goodness. Mm-hmm. Teach me the power of your wonderful words. See, life is full of making choices. Somebody say making choices. Life is full of making choices. Somebody say making choices. Life is full of making choices. One choice after another choice. One choice off of the heel of another choice. You have to think. If we make so many choices... Quilla, uh, um, you would think we would be good at making choices. Tasha, as many choices choices as we make, you would think, Sister Erica, that as I make all these choices, Trina, that I'll be good at making choices. Every day, it's, it's just a choice. What I'm going to wear, shoes I'm going to put on, the socks I'm going to put on. Now, see, see, some of y'all don't really care. Y'all just get dressed. Y'all go. Whatever you, whatever you find, the devil you have, but the, but the thing, um, you got some of us that spend time in the closet saying, no, 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 making choices. What am I going to eat for breakfast? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pour a bowl of cereal. Am I going to stop and get me a biscuit? Am I going to ask my baby to, to, to cook some of her, uh, her potatoes for breakfast? Am I going to have some pork? Am I going to have some bacon? Am I going to have choices? After choices, you think, Daddy, that after making all these choices, we'll be good at making choices. However, David asked the Lord to teach him how to make good choices, good decisions. Sometimes we need help in making good choices, good decisions, making good moves. So David asked the Lord to help him make good decisions because he realized that at times he strayed. 
off the path. And he needed God to help him make good decisions. If you look back in, in the word of God, it shows us how many people, it shows us so many people who have failed to follow God's instructions, never really making good choices and suffering the consequences. Big Brother told us last Sunday, he say, I'm trying to get rewards and not consequences. And that's all based on making good choices, making good moves, making good decisions. Proverbs, I'm going somewhere. Y'all ready? Proverbs 28, 25 through 26 reads like this. To make rash, hasty decisions mm -hmm. shows that you are not trusting the Lord. Come on. But when you rely totally on God, mm -hmm. you will still act carefully and mm -hmm. prudently. Mm -hmm. Self-confident know-it-alls will prove to be fools. Come on now. But when you learn, lean on the wisdom from above, uh -huh. you will have a way to escape the troubles of your own making. Amen. We must be mindful in making choices that we don't make them hastily. I've seen times where I hasten, hasten to make choices. And it didn't, it didn't work out for me. But we have to move carefully and intentionally. I made some bad choices. I made some bad moves. I made some bad decisions that, 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 that I had to actually pay for. That made me understand that statement way back in the day that the, my, my mama used to always tell us. It, it used to kind of like, what is mama talking about? Until I started growing up. That, that every tub eventually had to sit on his own bottom. In other words, eventually you're going to have to pay for the choices you make. So in making choices, let's not make them hastily. Let's move carefully and intentionally. We can't walk around as though we have life figured out. Lord help me. Sometimes I walk around as if I know what life has in store for Miller. Sometimes I walk around as I know what each day has for for me be careful that you don't walk around as though you have life figured out we don't need we um we do uh under walking around acting like we got life figured out and we don't need the lord to impart instructions right. have you ever just caught yourself saying i got this as if you don't need the lord to impart instructions because I know how to get up in the morning. I know how to go to the restroom. I know how to get off the bed. I know how to tie my shoes. And so then when we start getting these things figured out, we start think, thinking we're doing these things and I don't need God's instructions. Be careful that you don't eliminate God's instructions out of your life because you're going to figure out how to tie your shoes. Hear me, because if you done figured out how to pour a bowl of cereal, now you don't need God's instructions because you done figured out how to drive. I remember the first time my um my neighbor let me drive his car. When I matched the gas, it scared me to the point where I didn't want to drive no more. That car took off. See, see, y'all, I had made a bad choice. It's to get in the car without knowing how to drive the car. I've seen Dukes of Hazzard. I've seen people drive. So I thought that if I would just get behind the wheel, I would know how to drive a car. But then came, I got behind this one wheel and guess what? I lost more than I wanted to lose getting behind that one car. Have you ever made choices in your, in your life and now you're paying for it. 
because of making choices that you didn't think you needed God to impart instructions. As we learn how to, as we learn how to lean on God, we will escape the troubles we cause ourselves. I love that scripture in uh, uh, under the last part of that scripture in 26. It says this. It says, self-confident, know-it-alls will prove to be fools. But you, but the when you lean on the wisdom uh, uh, from above, you will have a way to escape the trouble. You, you, um, own your own of your own making yeah the troubles of your own making oh you leave it leave it right there Trinity. that's the part i want to talk about we would escape the troubles of our own makings a lot of these ditches we dig, dug ourselves a lot of these troubles we put on ourselves a lot of this stuff is self-inflicted wounds that we're paying for because we won't trust god somebody say make good decisions Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Make good choices. Be be sure you're making the right choice. Be sure you're making the right decisions. Everybody cool? Proverbs 23, 12 and 14 reads like this. Pay close attention uh -huh. to the teaching that corrects you. Oh, come on now. And open your heart to every word of instruction. Pay close attention to the teachings that corrects you. Growing up, I had the ability to pay no attention <laughs> to the correction that's supposed to taught me. I had the ability, Erica, to pay no attention to the things I should have been paying attention to. I had the ability. I had this thing inside of me that, that I didn't need nobody telling me what to do. But, but the Solomon said just pay close attention to the teachings that corrects you. I paid more attention to the people patting me on my back than the people teaching me, right. instructing me. Somebody say, pay close attention. Pay close attention. To the teaching that corrects you. Open your heart to every word of instructions. See, y'all, I'm that cat that don't read instructions. I'm that cat that don't read instructions. So since I don't read instructions horizontal, I tend not to read instructions vertically. That's got me all off whack vertically and got me all off balance horizontally. See, I'm that cat that'll get something with a thousand pieces and know how to put it together. I'm that cat. I believe if we got some people like that in the world that don't want to pay attention to instructions. 13 reads like this. Don't withhold appropriate discipline from your child. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and punish him when he needs it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, it won't kill him. Come on, parents. Come on, parents. Stop holding back correction. Appropriate discipline. Anybody hearing, hearing what they saying here? Sometimes you can't discipline your child because you mad at, at the world. And the child don't need the world's discipline. I only broke a window. Discipline, discipline me for the window. Not because me and Cole ain't getting together and I'm mad at Cola and mama don't like me no more. I didn't say it. Don't be looking at me like, like I said it. It's time for us to level up as we clean up what we messed up. Time to clean up this house. 
this earthly house is decaying. You got to find a home worth going to. Church don't talk about repentance no more. Falling at the altar and saying, I apologize. Clean me. So yes, after you've given them the appropriate, the uh, appropriate discipline, he said, go ahead and punish them. Punish them when they need it. Don't worry, you won't kill them. Mm. Somebody say, mm. Time to clean up. 14 reads like this. A good spanking could be the very thing that teaches him a lifelong lesson. Lord, a good spanking could save him. Man, I'm a witness. I had a couple of them good. <laughs> had a couple of them. <laughs> I had quite a few of them good spankings. And, if, and, and the very thing taught me and... And it's giving me a lifelong lesson. Man, I got to run, y'all. Y'all ready? Yeah. Let's keep going. 17 says this. Don't allow the actions of evil men to cause you to burn with anger. Mm -hmm. Instead, burn with unrelenting passion as you worship God in holy awe. Don't allow people to know they can get to you and then you let them get to you. So when you start acting ungodly, burn with passion, God's passion. Time to level up as we clean up. Stop living these tainted lies. I know how to get next to Erica. All I got to do is do this. And Erica will walk to the beat of my drum. I just don't believe our enemies ought to know they are enemies. Right, right. And I just believe that if we do things God's way, if this thing on, if we do things God's way, our enemies won't know that they are enemies because God said, love all. Matter of fact, he specifically said, love our enemies. Love those who despitefully use you. These ain't my words, these God's words. So instead of burning with the unrelit, uh, uh, instead of burning with anger, burn with passion as we worship God, as we do what he wants us to do in relationship to people. 18 reads like this. Your future is bright and filled with a living hope that will never fade away. 19. As you listen to me, my beloved child. Mm -hmm. You will grow in wisdom and your heart will be drawn into understanding, mm -hmm. which will empower you to make the right decision. 20. Don't live in the excesses of drunkenness or gluttony. Come on now. Or waste your life away by partying all the time. Mm -hmm. because, 21. Go ahead. Because drunkards and gluttons sleep their lives away mm -hmm. and end up broke. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Give respect to your father and mother. For without them, you wouldn't even be here. And don't neglect them when they grow old. Embrace the truth and hold it close. Mm -hmm. Don't let go of wisdom, instruction, and life-giving understanding. Amen. We have to be mindful to pay attention to the teachings that correct us. And be open to receive words of instructions. As parents, a good spanking could very well save a child's life. So, did he just put drunkenness and gluttony in the same verse? I would think that, that the drunkenness wasn't as bad as gluttonous. Or to be glut Did he just put that at the... Wow. So, so it's a waste of time. It's a waste... It is a waste of our time to party and to have unhealthy wants, cravings, and, and the hunger and the thirsty. We need to have a change of heart. All these things that feel good now, 
won't feel good later. Right. All these things that you big enough to do right now, it ain't going to be so much later. Amen. It's weighing on you. And then let's not forget to respect parents because without them, we would not even be here. So don't forget them when they're old. However, never ever give anyone the glory that belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give God all of his and let's honor our parents as he's blessed us with our parents. Amen. Amen. Got a couple of more. Y'all still breathing? Yeah. Amen. I, I think I got time for, for a couple of more. Romans 9, 18, 24, 18 through 24 reads like this. So again, we see mm -hmm. that it is entirely up to God mm -hmm. to show mercy or to harden the heart of whoever he chooses. Come on now. Well then, one might ask, if God is in complete control, mm -hmm. how could he blame us? For who can resist whatever he wants done? Come on. Mm -hmm. But who do you think you are to second guess God? Mm -hmm. How could a human being molded out of clay say to the one who molded him, mm -hmm. why in the world did you make me this, this way? Come on. Uh -huh. Or are you denying the right of the potter to make out of clay whatever he wants? Come on. Doesn't the potter have the right to make from the same lump of clay an elegant vase or an ordinary pot? Somebody say, let God, let God. Be, God. be God. Period. Period. Let's just let God be God. Period. Let's pump our brakes. Who actually knows enough? Y'all listen to me. Who actually knows enough to call God into question? Who actually knows enough to call God in question? God can do whatever he wants to do. All we have to do is follow his instructions. God can do whatever he wants to do. All we have to do is follow his instructions. Now we'll forget First time I heard this, I think my daddy was teaching on this. He said that um, that th there were people that came to work. One came out at the eighth hour. Another came out at the um, fourth hour. Another come out at the second hour. And Jesus paid all of them the same wage. Now y'all, I'd have had a problem with that. I'd have just had a problem with that if I had worked eight hours and Rick had worked six hours and Kimi had worked four hours and Trina had worked two and God gonna give me and Trina the same pay who can call God into question some of the miracles we have right now we, did, we didn't qualify for them we don't deserve it life don't add up to where you should have this and that some of y'all should be in therapy right now. Some of us should have lost our mind long time ago. But it was of the Lord's mercy. I'm going to try to titillate. I'm going to try to open up your cranium and post some stuff in it this morning. It was of the Lord's mercy that we wouldn't consume because God's mercy and his grace is faithful. So I look a whole lot better than I should look right now. I deserve damnation. And God gave me salvation. Now, who can call God into question? I know I was the biggest that. I was the biggest this. But God done saved me now. So who can call God into question about the things he do? What's real important is what we make. Uh, uh, what's really important is that we make good choices. Because good or bad, we will have to be satisfied with the outcome. Because you made the choice. Be satisfied with the outcome. 
you made that choice. You know, some of us thinking right now, Lord Jesus, I did. I did make the choice to marry him. I did make the choice to marry her. I did make the choice to get that job. I did make the choice to get that car. Not paying for that car. I got my ankles tied. <laughs> I got my hands tied. Now I know why big sis pray. Lord, I'm close to getting this car paid for. Fix it, Jesus. Fix it. I know they say it's total. I say it's fixable. Now fix it, Jesus. Have you ever went to somebody and they said something was done with? And God said, it ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. Not done yet. I'm not finished. I'm not done working. So we have a great responsibility. What's our responsibility, Pastor? It's to learn how to follow God's instructions. That's our responsibility. Proverbs, y'all still here? Yeah. Man, since y'all came, I'm gonna I'm go in and I'm gonna give you what you came for. Amen. Proverbs 5, 21 and 23 out of the message Bible reads like this. Y'all going to love this. And please pay a close, close attention to, to some of these points he's making. Go ahead. Mark well mm -hmm. that God doesn't miss a move you make. Lord have mercy. Go ahead, baby. He's aware of every step you take. Mm, Mark well, God don't miss a move we make. Go ahead, baby. The shadow of your skin will overtake you. You'll Roger, find say that again. The shadow. I'm sorry. The shadow of your sin right, will okay. overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over. She yourself. said skin the first time, didn't she? <laughs> Sometimes we got to call first lady in the LC because LC don't think she do stuff like that. He just say skin. I said, "What do you No, no. I know this thing said. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. I love her. Yes, sir. Yes, I got a car talking about skin. Trent, I'm sitting here reading skin. skin. Well, yeah, you're sinning in your skin. Go ahead, right, baby. That's Work that's it right. out, girl. That's right. Do your thing. Read it again, honey. That's right. That's the book of LC. Okay. <laughs> the book of LC. <laughs> the shadow of your sin uh -huh. will overtake you. Uh huh. You'll find yourself stumbling all over yourself in the dark. Lord have mercy. Self inflicted wounds. The shadow of your own sin. Go ahead, baby. Death, 23. Death is the reward of an undisciplined life. Say that one more time. Death is the reward of an undisciplined life. Mm, go ahead. Uh-huh. Your foolish decisions trap you in a dead end. Even though we have the right to choose, don't forget that God doesn't miss a thing. Y'all, please listen to me. Please listen to these next couple of things I've got to say to us. God is fully aware of every step you make. Listen to me, please. The shadow of our sins will overtake us. We will find ourselves stumbling in the dark. Death is the reward for an undisciplined life. There, there is nothing but a dead end of ahead because of our foolish decisions and our foolish choices. Somebody say, God, God. Doesn't, miss doesn't miss a thing. Amen. Proverbs, the same Proverbs Chapter 5, 21 through 23 out of the TPT version that I'm going to get out your hair. Promise y'all, I got to do this in about three minutes. Somebody pray for me. 21 <laughs> says this. Ha! Lord, I receive. Move, Jesus. Move, Jesus. Go ahead, baby. Read 21. For God sees everything you do, and his eyes are wide open as he observes every single habit you have. God sees everything, eyes wide open to every habit you have. Woo, help me, Jesus. 22 says this. Beware that your sins 
don't overtake you uh -huh. and that the scars of your own conscience don't become the rope that tie you up. Ooh, be careful that your sin, I'm glad Nisa ain't here. Tell Nisa I said your sin. <laughs> <laughs> be careful that your sin don't overtake you. Be careful that your scars and these sins don't tie you up like ropes. 23 says this, and then I'm about to get out of here. Go ahead. Those who choose wickedness uh -huh. die for lack of self-control. Come on. For their foolish ways lead them astray, carrying them away as hostages, kidnapped captives, robbed of destiny. Lord have mercy. Lord, my foolish ways can attest. Well, y'all listen to this. Because I've chosen wickedness, I'm dying from a lack of self-control. My, self, my lack of self-control shows I've chosen to be wicked. That's what I said, too. That's what I said, How? Let's, let's get this. <laughs> Thank you, How. I was saying, Lord, if I say this, would, would, would somebody say, wow. Thank you, Hal. Uh, uh, no, I'll pay you later. No, I'm, just <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking. So keep on thinking. So keep on thinking. You are something because you have fooled humans. So keep on thinking. You are something. Because you're pulling the wool over humans' eyes. And you've gotten away from humans. Keep on thinking you're something. Remember, humans don't see everything. Remember, humans don't observe every single habit. Remember, humans are not aware of every step you take. So keep sticking your chest out because mama don't know this. Keep sticking your chest out because granddaddy don't know this. Keep sticking your chest out because daddy don't see me doing this. Daddy don't see everything. Daddy don't know everything. Daddy don't know all your bad habits. Guess what? God sees everything. God observes every single habit. Not humans. God is aware of every step we take. God sees everything. God observes everything. So when I get out from around Nicole and I start looking at women like I want them and I got a wife, Cole don't see that, so I got away. But see, I'm trying to hide from the wrong person. See, y'all, when, when, when we only teach humans to observe and respect other humans that teach humans how to be sneaky this thing on i ain't think y'all gonna go with me on that one i'm gonna say it again when i teach when i only teach jojo to only do right because i see him i've taught jojo how to be sneaky what i should have been teaching jojo is that I may not see everything, but God's eyes are wide open. God sees everything. God observes every single habit. God is aware of every step you take. So be mindful. Somebody say be mindful. Somebody say just be mindful. Somebody say be mindful. Somebody say, just be mindful. Somebody say, be mindful. Just be mindful. God is watching. God is watching. He is in control of heaven and hell. God is the final judge, not humans God is our final judge not humans 
So be careful the moves we make. Joe, be careful the choices you make. Joe, be careful the steps you take. Joe, be careful the unhealthy habits you form. Joe, be careful not to be sneaky. Because I was that child that cussed at school and never cussed at home. Cussed on the football field, never cussed in the in, on 636 Ontario Street. I was sneaky. But the, guess what I had to grow up to know? God sees everything. And God is watching. It's time for us to level up as we clean up. As we get in perfect, as we get perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal, as we stay uncontaminated and untainted, yes, I'm free to make my choice. I'm free to make my move. I'm free to make my decision. Be sure you're making the right choice. Be sure you're making the right moves. Be sure you're making the right decisions. May God bless and keep you is my prayer. Living life in love. God bless you. We want to thank you for watching. And if that word blessed your life and you're saying to yourself, I think I want to be saved. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So repeat after me. Father, I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe you have raised Christ from the dead. And I believe now I am saved. So let us pray. So dear Lord, we just bless you for this day. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being our Father, the God that comes after us, the God that loves us, the God that wants us to be saved, the God that wants us to be healed and free. Lord, we thank you for salvation on today. Lord, we thank you for coming into our lives, Lord God, so that we can experience new life on today and live out each and every day of our salvation, God. Lord, we thank you for it. We honor you and we give you praise. And this is your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Enjoy your new life. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We pray that this message has been an extreme blessing to your life. Please also consider joining us every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for our Morning Glory Corporate Prayer on Free Conference Call. You can also join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our refuel service, which is held on Zoom. Every first Thursday, we will have intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. on free conference call. So make sure you join us then as well. Here are three ways to give. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And follow us on Facebook as well as YouTube. Well, Team Trinity, remember, we love you. Have a great week.